We've learned about alienated children and favored parents, but what about rejected parents? How does it feel to be Plutoed, to lose your family and your role as a parent? Rejected parents feel devastated when their children refuse to spend time with them, stop expressing affection and respect for them. They haven't been prepared for this level of rejection and they're stunned by it. Oftentimes they're embarrassed and they worry that others are going to think, gee, you must have done something really bad if your kids don't want to spend time with you. People stop them on the street and ask how their children are doing and rejected parents don't know because they are not being kept included in the children's activities. And they're very embarrassed. They don't know what to say. They usually try to change the subject. It's, it's psychologically devastating to a parent to have the children that you loved and raised want to have nothing to do with you. If alienation has been a problem in your family, the rejected parent probably feels most ashamed when ignored or shunned in front of others, such as at school or sports events. When people ask about their children, rejected parents often feel terribly embarrassed, even ashamed. They worry that others secretly think, there must be more to the story. I wonder what they did wrong to deserve their children's disrespect. Parents who have been rejected may begin to doubt themselves. They might ask, did I do something wrong? Maybe I'm not such a good parent. It's very sad for a rejected parent when they see other parents enjoying their children because it reminds them of all that they're missing out on. Uh, they feel like shadows, ignored. They feel shunned by their children and it's humiliating to them. If one of your parents is rejected, they're probably trying to figure out how to deal with this. Should I give up? Should I be tough? Walking away feels wrong, even though this might create peace. Hanging in there seems right but maybe the emotional cost to you and them is just too much to bear. As a result, and you may have noticed this, these parents often act inconsistently. Sometimes they withdraw and seem passive and uninterested in being with you. Other times they try hard to be involved, maybe even going to court, calling the police, or insisting that everyone see a therapist. It may seem like they do too much or too little, which might make them seem unreliable. In some families, after repeated attempts to reconnect with the children, a rejected parent may get so discouraged that they enter into a state that we call learned helplessness. All their attempts to solve the problems, all their attempts to reach out to their children fail, and they don't know what else to do, and they begin feeling utterly helpless to change the situation. They may feel that they have no alternative but to withdraw from the children, to stop trying. Unfortunately, for some children, when their rejected parent stops trying to see them, the children actually feel abandoned by that parent because they've never really lost the love they felt for that parent. And the children may then think, gee, maybe that parent doesn't deserve our love. If he wouldn't hang in there and continue to try to see us, they may misunderstand the parent's withdrawal not as a sign that the parent just didn't know what else to do and felt helpless to solve the problem. They may misunderstand and think that that's a sign that the parent doesn't love them enough. In some situations, particularly when there have been multiple attempts to heal the relationship between children and the rejected parent, and these attempts all fail, there may be no better alternative than to at least accept the situation as it is and temporarily stop trying to heal, stop trying to reconnect, with the hope that sometime in the future the time will be right for the children to recover their love and restore a positive relationship with the parent. Rejected parents often ask others for advice on how to manage this difficult situation. Sometimes well-meaning friends and relatives encourage parents to respond with anger. You need to teach your ex a lesson. Or how dare your children treat you like that? This can lead parents to overreact in ways that don't help. If your parent responds this way, it might drive you further away rather than make you want to repair the relationship. In fact, rejected parents sometimes need to be reminded that all kids complain about their parents from time to time 
Just because a child is moody or negative doesn't automatically mean that the child is becoming alienated. Rejected parents seek advice from professionals, such as lawyers and psychologists. Rejected parents are often told that the best way to handle their children's rejection is to allow a cooling off period, allow the children to withdraw for a while, wait for the right time to come when the children will reach out to reconnect with you. But unfortunately, in many families, the right time never comes. And what began as an alienation, where the children had negative attitudes about the parent, becomes a total estrangement where the children lose all contact with that parent. One of the most important things for a rejected parent is to try to stay in touch with the children, try to maintain contact. Now this may mean having to develop a thick skin because when the children are with you, they may treat you with contempt and with disrespect. But we found that it's easier to help children recover a positive relationship if they spend time with you and if they get to see that the rejected parent still loves them and is not giving up. So what can rejected parents do? In the words of Winston Churchill, never, never, never give up. Not giving up, though, requires persistence and understanding. And your parents may not have a lot of that left if they've been rejected over and over. When they lose their patience, and nearly every parent does from time to time, parents make mistakes. The favored parent might exaggerate these mistakes to make it seem like the rejected parent always acts impatiently, or that this is why the children don't want to spend time with the parent. When children treat a parent so disrespectfully, most often the parent is not at all prepared to deal with that effectively, and they react by overreacting. They get very angry, they lose their temper, they ask the children, how dare you speak to me that way? but they can frighten the children when they do that and then the children can use that as another reason for rejecting the parent because the parent actually has yelled at them, has been aggressive, and maybe scared the children. In other cases, rejected parents will tell the children, if you don't enjoy spending time with me, why don't you leave this home and come back when you can be more positive? And unfortunately, the children may use that as a reason not to see the parent. They'll, they'll throw those words back to the parent. Well, you said you didn't want to see us. And what is, begins as a parent's effort to improve the relationship and solve the problem can really be the beginning of the end of the relationship. It's very important that rejected parents avoid overreacting to their children and avoid rejecting their children. This means they've got to develop a, thin, a thick skin <laughs> and they've got to develop patience to tolerate what is very disrespectful and contemptuous behavior without losing their temper. If your parent overreacts, you might worry that this will happen all the time, or you might think that your attitude finally made your parents stop loving you. Secretly, you might even worry that you are no longer someone who is worth caring about. Another common mistake rejected parents make is to lecture about right and wrong, fair and unfair. While the lesson might be true, lectures rarely work. The more they try to tune you in, the more you try to tune them out. If you've been rejecting a parent, you may be frustrated when it seems like they minimize your concerns and complaints. A rejected parent might say, oh, you don't really feel that way. Or that's just your other parent talking. Those aren't your real feelings. This too doesn't work. It could make you feel that your parent doesn't care or doesn't take you seriously. If you and a parent are alienated from one another or becoming alienated, it is certainly important to talk about what's going on. But one mistake that rejected parents make is to try to show their concern by asking a lot of questions. This often backfires rather than helps. If you've experienced this, the questions are likely to make you feel interrogated rather than cared about. And it may feel like their questions imply criticism, not at all what your parent wants you to feel. Another mistake that some rejected parents make is to counter all the bad mouthing by saying bad things about the other one. This makes children feel bad and only makes things worse. But rejected parents shouldn't be reluctant to set the record straight when children say things that are wrong or unfair. 
Your children need help to deal with complaints they hear about you. For instance, a child says, Mommy says you didn't spend much time with us and we never had any fun together. You can respond, Mommy's mistaken. Remind the children of specific things you've done for them and with them. Bring out family videos and photos showing better times together. When a rejected parent overreacts to the children, it's very important for the parent to acknowledge that they made a mistake and to apologize for it. It can be very difficult for a rejected parent to do that though because they feel they've been treated so unfairly. The children have been so disrespectful and treated them with such utter contempt that the rejected parent has a hard time acknowledging that he or she contributed to the children's conflict. Um, but it's important that they acknowledge their mistake and take responsibility for it. We've already said that rejected parents should never give up. Their children are worth fighting for. But what else can they do to help? We'll have more to say about this later in the program, but here are a few tips. First and foremost, rejected parents should remember that their children are victims. They didn't want this mess, they just got caught in it and are doing their best to cope with something they don't fully understand. Second, rejected parents should hold back from arguing and criticizing when their angry children invite them to argue and criticize. It's important to remember that being in a relationship is more important than being right. Rejected parents need to develop a thick skin to withstand all the hurtful things their children say and do. Third, Rejected parents should watch and wait for unexpected opportunities to help their children. Big school projects or medical problems offer opportunities to show interest, caring, and concern. When rejected parents make mistakes, they're acting like all parents do from time to time. Even parents who aren't rejected make some of these mistakes, especially when they're stressed. We hope your parents will learn from this program to avoid these traps. But keep in mind that parents are more than just their mistakes. Maybe it's time to cut them some slack.